Uh, amen. But my mama done a lot of preaching at home. Daddy wouldn't allow her to preach anywhere but at home. <laughs> uh, she kept us kids lined out because dad was going a lot. Uh, growing up in a large family and God has been real good to us. And I was telling a lady there a while ago that uh, we have 12 of us in our family and there's seven of us still living and I'm the baby and I just turned 70 in March. And so we've got them from 70 to 94. God's still blessing and we're, we're thankful for that. Praise the Lord. So get your songbooks and turn to page 55 and stand and sing. If you haven't shook hands with one another, do that. And I'll ask our choir to come up on this, this last verse. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved on earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of His resurrection share. All His chosen ones shall gather to their beyond the skies. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the mass from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wonders and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the row is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the row is called up yonder, when the row is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Amen. You may be seated. Brother Burt, would you lead us in prayer to start our service? Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for this time to come together tonight. Lord, we're going to choir as they sing. The preacher see comes with the message. Lord, may our hearts be prepared for it, and may we receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good, isn't it? Amen. Good to be here. Amen. Got some dear friends here tonight, and it's good to have them here. Amen. I, I didn't do this uh, Saturday night. Didn't do it yesterday, but how many preachers we got? Not counting the women. Amen. <laughs> Stand up, would you? That's good, isn't it? Amen, that's good. Praise the Lord for you. Amen. Amen. We, uh, I thought we had a good service yesterday, didn't you, Brother Lord? I enjoyed that singing Saturday. Enjoyed that food, too. Mm. Amen. But it's good to be saved sanctified and set aside and ready for the ride. Amen. Uh, Brother Buster Fox back there has been a dear friend of mine since back in the late 80s. I met him down at Fundamental Baptist on Missions and helped him set up a print shop. He don't know, he's got hearing aids but he don't like to wear them. So, I have to he talk. Hear yeah. He I'm going to talk low, amen. Low he is with you always, amen. I want to, tonight I want to, our first preacher to come. Uh, uh, Brother Tim, I introduced him the other night, uh, one that uh, done the cooking for us down here for the homecoming. Brother Tim's praying about and working with me. I'm, I'm, I'm getting younger. You know, I I used to didn't like people to help me do anything. You know what I'm saying? And you notice, Brother Roy, he said he's seventy. You know, but you notice he stood there and waited to help me up. Yeah, you know. I appreciate that, Brother Roy. Amen. But Brother Tim is uh, is praying about coming and helping to head up Plenty for Christ missions, and uh, he pastors. Uh, yeah, that's where he's at, Lancaster Baptist Church in Lancaster, Ohio. And I just wanted to, the, you folks to meet him, and I want him to preach to us tonight. Amen. Amen. Start this out, and I want you to pray for him. Uh, he's been coming down here, driving down two and a half hours, working here with me and helping here, get everything ready for the meeting, and and then driving home, he's got a small family back there, wife and six kids. And uh, uh, so anyway, pray for him as he brings the first message, all right? Bless you, Lord. I think we'll figure it out here in a minute. I think I got it. All right. Good evening. I am glad to be here. And uh, this uh, part of the country reminds me of where I grew up. And uh, I say I'm Appalachian by birth. And I was born and raised in southern Ohio. And I know for a lot of folks not from the area, you say southern Ohio, they think Cincinnati. And they're vastly mistaken. And uh, I grew up in Lawrence County, Ohio, just outside of Ironton. How many know where Ironton is? Good night. There, you know, most meetings I'm in, I say, who knows where Ironton, Ohio is? I'm usually the only one with my hand up. And uh, so I'm glad that's the case and glad some of you know where that's at. And I uh, grew up in that area. Um, just as Brother Huffman said, I'm very grateful to have been having the privilege, had the privilege to be raised in a Christian home. And uh, my, my parents uh, determined before they ever had children, there's four of us, myself, a brother and two sisters, before they ever had children, they wanted to raise their children for the Lord and uh, wanted to have a Christian home. 
And um, a Christian home is not just a home where Christians live, but it's a home where Christ is exemplified. And uh, I'm grateful for that. And uh, we, I was taught growing up, there's really not a great reason to miss church. And uh, you had to find a hard one, you know. And um, if you were in the hospital, that was usually excusable. Uh, but other than that, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, special meetings, get there early and lock the doors and stay after and take out the trash and clean the toilets. And, and, and just that was the involvement that my family had. I'm grateful that I heard the gospel at an early age, trusted Christ as my Savior at the age of seven, and surrendered my life to God to be a preacher at the age of 16 in the state of West Virginia, over in a little town of Lavalette, a little campground over there, Camp Jerry. How many of you are familiar with that property? And I surrendered to preach in the parking lot of that chapel. And um, I was uh, didn't know all I was getting into and still figuring it out a little bit. And uh, But I'm grateful that I'm where I'm at now. My wife, Mindy, is on the back row, and we do have six children. And very grateful for that, and grateful for God's blessing in our life with two girls and four boys. And uh, so far, you haven't heard them, and we're praying that's the plan the rest of the meeting tonight and uh, that worked out great and so I'm so grateful already for the folks who will be able to meet uh, down here on Saturday and then days before and of course tonight already and uh, I don't want to linger too long I look forward to talking with you some more after the service uh, we'll be here in the morning and then we're traveling back home tomorrow afternoon and then coming back down Thursday afternoon to be here Thursday night Friday morning Friday night and then we'll head home sometime Saturday back at our place on Sunday and so it's almost to the point where I can drive regular speed on the highway now from Spencer to here. And I'm no longer that foreigner with the Ohio plates that everyone's following, you know, in a line. And I'm picking up pace right with them now. And so we're learning our way around. Let's take our Bibles tonight, please, and turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 6. Isaiah chapter number 6. We're going to look at a familiar verse I learned a long time ago. I have been preaching a long, long time. Uh, started preaching in 1996, preached my first message at the age of 16, and uh, the Lord led us to Lancaster to start uh, the Lancaster Baptist Church back in 2004. So our church is almost, uh, this October, our church will celebrate its 14th year of existence, and we're so grateful for that. And uh, I learned a long time ago, and uh, my preacher that I grew up under told me this, and it took me a little while to learn it for myself, that if it's new, if it's true, it's probably not new. Amen. And if it's new, it's probably not true. And I don't know, I think the challenge sometimes I gave myself as a young preacher was to try to find that one nugget in the Bible, that one golden nugget of information that no other preacher had ever found, and preach on that. And uh, I've learned I'm never going to find that one probably. And uh, someone else smarter than me has probably already lived and found it. Uh, so we're going to look at a familiar text tonight and a familiar verse and hopefully the Lord will help us tonight, all of us, uh, be drawn closer to Him. But Isaiah chapter 6, let's look there together if you can please, verse number 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain He covered His face, and with twain He covered His feet, and with twain He did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of Him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Amen. And uh, in June of 1996, I surrendered my life to be a preacher. But in June of 1998, I finally ran the white flag to the top of the pole. I said, Lord, whatever, wherever. That's where I'll go and that's what I want to do. And I want to follow the Lord with my whole life. And we see in this passage, when the Lord speaks, and we see Him talking in verse number 8, the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Amen. We live in a generation that needs reached. Amen. 
We live in a generation where the gospel may be more available than it's ever been, but it may be more ignored than it's ever been. And it may be more avoided than it's ever been. And it may be more substituted than it's ever been. But the Lord God says here, Who shall I send? And who will go for me? We find, if you read on the rest of the chapter, we're not going to tonight for time's sake, but Isaiah begins to ask questions and God fills in the answers and gives him the message to speak. We know that God is always speaking. Amen. Tonight, if you're in this, in, under this tabernacle, God's speaking to you tonight. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, God is calling you by the word come. Amen. Come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. But tonight, if you're sitting in this tabernacle and you know the Lord is your Savior, He's speaking to you another word. He's saying, go. Amen. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And in our little town of Lancaster, Ohio, I say often in, our, in the pulpit there, there's a lot of creatures roaming the streets and the, and the alleyways of Lancaster, Ohio. Amen. And down here, there's a lot of creatures crawling the hills and the valleys that need to reach with the gospel of Christ. Amen. But did you know that by the time the Lord God asked this question, He'd already been at work? Did you know that in your life, the Lord's already at work? He doesn't tire like we tire. He's always working. I want you to notice tonight, when the Bible says, who will go for us, I want to give you three people that can go. First of all, for us to be able to go for the Lord, we must first see what Isaiah saw. Amen. The Bible says in this first verse, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Amen. I saw the Lord. I want you to know something. There are some men in my life down through the years that I look back to often, and I'm so grateful for the influence they've had in my life. Amen. But if I live the rest of my life with the goal of powering my life after a man, then I have failed the Lord. Amen. Because it wasn't that Isaiah said, I saw Uzziah. He said, I saw the Lord. Amen. Here in just a few verses, it talks about, he says, I have seen the king. Well, he knew King Uzziah. He'd seen him before. That's not the king he was referring to. In verse 5, when you see the word king, it's in capital K, I-N-G. I have seen the king. He had seen the king of glory. Yes. I want you to notice when he saw the king, exactly what he saw. You see, we live in a day and a time when the world is doing its very best to bring God from His holy place down to where they are. Amen. Amen. I was at Children's Hospital in Columbus several years ago, and I met there a pastor by his title, by he called himself, from his church in our town. And he began to ask me questions, and I'd just been in Lancaster just a few years, and he said, well, what's your church like? And I said, well, I'm a young guy, and I was much younger then than I am now. I said, but we're pretty old-fashioned. And he said, let me guess. You sing like old hymns and stuff. Yes. And he said, you probably preach from the King James Bible. I said, yes, we do. And he said, can I help you out? <laughs> well, I'll take all the help I can get, you know. I said, are you sure? He said, you're never going to get it done that way. His exact next words were these. He said, you have to find a way to bring God from some high, lofty, unreachable place down to where he can rub elbows with common man. Can I be honest with you? I don't want to serve a God that rubs elbows with common man. Amen. I can rub elbows with common man. Amen. I want to serve and follow and see the God that spoke into existence the beautiful trees and hills and valleys that we can see from this vantage point tonight. Amen. I want to serve and worship and follow the God that by Him all things consist. Amen. That by Him tonight we're not colliding with the sun and our life over. That by Him, when He speaks, it all freezes. Amen. And when He speaks again, it continues in perfect time. I want to serve a God that made the body that I get to inhabit in this life that is miraculous in itself. And I want to serve and follow a God that Isaiah saw. Amen. He didn't see some hand-fashioned God. He saw the Jehovah God of heaven. Amen. I want you to know that if we're going to go for the Lord, we just don't need to see what Isaiah saw. We need to sense 
what Isaiah sensed. You see, when we get a right view of who God is, it changes our perception of everything else in life. Because the Bible says in verse number 5, Then said I. Once Isaiah's view was right, his perception drastically changed. I wonder, while King Uzziah was living, I wonder what Isaiah thought of himself. There's probably a lot of believers, a lot of children of God that have pretty high opinions of themselves. And we think things like, well, I'm a good person. I go to church on Sundays and, and, and I, I tithe when I can and, and I carry a Bible and I have it at the house and I sit in the same place all week long so I know where it's at on Sunday. I knocked on a fellow's door in Lancaster one day and I've changed the way I've asked the question, but I said, sir, are you a Christian? He said, well, yes, I am. And I said, that's wonderful. What, what makes you so confident in that fact? And he said, well, I was born in America. I said, what else? <laughs> he said, well, I pay my taxes. I'm nice to my wife. And that might make you an American citizen and a decent fella, but that doesn't make you a child of God. Amen. Because when Isaiah saw the Lord, he did not start by saying, Woe unto Israel. Woe unto these people. It started with him. Amen. When he got a right view of God, he said, Woe is me. Amen. For I'm undone. Amen. And I'm a man of unclean lips. Right. Do you notice immediately when he got a right view of God, he began confessing where he was sure where his shortcomings were? Amen. I'm a man of unclean lips. He said, I, I, I'm not using right words. I'm not speaking God's message. I'm, I'm talking a lot and I'm saying a lot of things, but I've been a man of unclean lips. You see, for God to use us and God to send us, I think we know enough in this tabernacle tonight to know that God is not going to use a filthy vessel. Amen. To do a holy work. Amen. We have to first see what Isaiah saw. And secondly, we need to sense what Isaiah sensed. I really fear. I've been pastoring the same church now for 13 years, and I'm about to start learning some things, I think. I really fear that in this generation, we've become really good at not confronting sin. Amen. We've become really good at rewording it, making it sound better. We've become really good at hiding it. We've become really good at avoiding the topics when it comes up. And we've become really good at avoiding the Holy Spirit when God's conviction comes setting in. Amen. But before Isaiah could stand before God and say, Here I am. Send me. And before he could step to the nation of Israel and begin preaching and teaching God's message, he had to first deal with himself. Amen. I often wonder if one of the reasons our nation has not seen national revival in generations is because we want to preach about the faults of the world instead of first dealing with woe is me. Amen. You know, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it begins by the words, if my people. Amen. Thirdly, if we're going to go for the Lord and give the message that God's given us to give, we have to be willing to say what Isaiah said. I wonder how many buildings in our country sat yesterday with bodies in them and the Bible being preached. I wonder how many of those bodies sat in that, those buildings with the head knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ and maybe many with a heart knowledge and a true acceptance of the Son of God into their life as their Savior. But I wonder how many were willing to say today, I'll speak. Amen. I'll go. I'll be the voice. Amen. Did you know that in a church house or in a tabernacle like this, this is the easiest place in the world to talk about the Lord? Amen. It ought to be. Listen, we're like-minded folks. But the challenge begins when we begin following God's direction by going into the world. When I step out of the church house as the pastor and go into my secondary employment on Monday morning like I did this morning, 
a different world. And I'm surrounded by men and a few ladies that live like the devil, live like the world. They're walking according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. I'm often reminded, for the Bible says, such were some of you. Amen. On one occasion where I am employed, I had an opportunity to choose a locker to keep a few personal items in. And I looked and they said, there's four or five available. They all had numbers on them. And I looked and I found the first one that was available was locker number six. Number six in the Bible is often used to identify as mankind. Our weakness, our frailty. Because none of us are any good without the Lord. Amen. We're worth nothing. Amen. I think we forget that. I think we allow 21st century psychology to enter our Christian realm and we begin to think of ourselves as good people. Amen. And the Bible says there's none good. Right. There's none that doeth good. There's not a one of us that could muster all of our energy to find one righteous act in and of ourselves in the eyes of an almighty, all-holy God. I find in meetings like this, there's often people that are willing to jump to their feet in a moment and say, I'll go! Going's not where it starts. It starts by seeing God where He is. Amen. By sensing where we are Amen. and confessing our sins and getting right with a holy God. Amen. And then putting to action the greatest ability in the Christian life availability. Amen. I wonder how many pews were filled yesterday and how many mouths were silent today because there were several that were not willing to say, Hear my Lord, send me. Listen, let's not be the silent voice. Let's not walk out of this place and go to the supermarket, the gas station, the grocery store, and family households the rest of this week and keep our mouths silent. Amen. We have the message of hope. The message of freedom. Amen. Did you know all the things the world is looking for they can find in Jesus Christ? Amen. They're looking everywhere else. Right. And we have the answer. And may God help us to get it out. Let's pray together, shall we? Lord, we thank you. Lord, I pray that tonight that your Holy Spirit would do his perfect work in all of our hearts and all of our lives. Lord, I'm so grateful to be on this hilltop tonight, to be able to hear singing like we've already heard and look forward to singing I know we're going to hear and look forward to hear preaching and excited about hearing preaching tonight. But Lord, we'd all be here in vain if we don't see our Heavenly Father as we ought to see Him. And be willing to come before You as an open, empty vessel. Willing to be filled with Your power and with Your message. And with Your Spirit. Lord, I pray that Your Holy Spirit would control this meeting. Every word that's said, every song that's sung, may it be pleasing unto Thee. Guide us through the remainder of our time together, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Baptist Church over frame almost 46 years ago. <clears throat> Lord saved. Amen. Amen. Changed my life completely. Amen. That night, God has been, been so good to me. I just praise Him all the time for salvation. I got a lot of other things to praise Him about, but I like the plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. I'm glad He saved me. He's done a good job. He's kept me. Well, I tell you, I couldn't keep my, myself one day. I found that out real quick after I got saved. Got in the Word and found out that God was going to keep me. And I praise Him for His keeping. I'm glad that He imputes faith daily to live by. And I praise Him for 